like it was some weeks later that I began to realize that, hey, this is legit and he's actually leaving. And my thought was, ooh, now we're going to lose that great, great, you know, mid show for it, for the audience, you know, that I thought was a really integral point. <laughs> Before we get to the main event, Raven and Terry Funk, which we will talk about the match uh, about more, uh, I want to make mention that Sam Mann went in with cracked ribs. Uh, Funk was always injured, uh, but the next month, mm -hmm. Stevie Richards ends up with a career-altering injury, courtesy, sadly, of Terry Funk. I think it was another triple threat match, and Terry Funk dropped a guardrail on him in Buffalo, breaking his neck. Now, mm. uh, Stevie and the BWO were white hot at this time, and rumour suggests that Stevie was in line to win the ECW world title at some point soon after. Instead, he spends months out, and then he announces a retirement, then he ends up going to WCW in a decision that he said he later... He basically admits he regrets. He wishes he sort of like yep. finished out with ECW. But um, specifically, Stevie, do you remember the neck breaking or the uh, neck injury that day? I, I didn't know immediately it was a broken neck. And then when I heard the uh, the broken neck stuff a while after, <clears throat> my immediate response was uh, that it's an aggrandizement. You know, it's like in wrestling, we're going to make everything bigger than it's supposed to be. But I know that just maybe a few months ago, uh, Stevie was having some issues. And <clears throat> he leaving ECW, I think, is where I started going, well, if he left... You know, everybody knew the other companies, even though it was more intensive as far as time, was a lot less physical than, say, ECW was going to be. In the match, during the pay-per-view, the three-way dance, when Terry's doing what I call the helicopter, the, the ladder on his mm -hmm. head, and, and there were a couple of bumps on the on the ladder before that that were pretty stiff. Uh, but the ladder on the head uh, thing, if you watch it closely when he's hitting those guys, um, a couple of those times, they're, they're shoot like the one time I think Stevie's standing up and he steps right into one and, and uh, looks like he's unaware of it coming to me. Uh, those are the things that you really get hurt on when you're ill prepared for, don't see it coming, and then something like that happens. Uh, but you know, when that happened, now at this point, when when uh, Stevie had broken his neck, remember earlier we had had a couple other people with serious neck injuries, and you know, it started like a feeling, at least in my head. Like we're pushing that we're we're taking too many chances out there. Like sooner or later, the odds are going to go against you, right? It's just common knowledge, just you know, basic math. And you know, for me, like it got to be the the, the a scary point because you want to go out there and deliver the goods, but by that time there was that midpoint, like ninety six, maybe into early ninety seven, where the fans, if you'd bring your hands up on a chair shot, they'd boo the shit out of you. Uh, if you you know, took the table and the table didn't break just a certain way or didn't break at all. Uh, they, if you didn't swing a chair to take somebody's head off the things like that, the fans would really just, bleh, just crap on it. And, you know, it, it, again, like with what we were doing, we were ramping it up so much comparative to what the industry had historically been. It just seemed to me like this is inevitable. Like sooner or later, you're going to get a bad injury. Uh, and let's just hope it's not, paralyzed or killed or whatever um and i remember that being like an overriding thought because stevie like you said they had gotten so over as the bwo and really were a fantastic and integral part of the ecw success they were the comedy troupe in the middle of all that violence to, to bring some levity into it you know and i think that was a necessary uh tool for us because it helped stave off some of that pressure you know, the crowd that if you didn't if you didn't vent some of that pressure off, you might have seen a whole lot more incidences like with me and Franny and Gary where you know we threw the halo down. Where the, and at some point the, the odds will go no matter how good uh, Atlas was and our security staff that were top notch, they can't watch everybody all the time. And all one person has to do is just one time sneak that knife in, sneak that gun in, and now you got you know a real debacle on your hands. So uh, that was the, the biggest, like, as you sent me the link and I'm watching it, I remember watching it in the, the, on the first couple hit, hits with the, the helicopter. I remember like, ooh, ooh, like cringing, like, like Stevie stepped right into that one. And then Hack was going to take it purposely, right? You could see him walking right into them. Uh, and then a couple hard bump slams or, you know, over the rope flips and stuff onto it. That kind of thing, when you're not hitting flat, that's really dangerous when here's the mat and there's something sitting on top of the mat and you take the bump there. I'm sorry. That hits you in the wrong place. 
and you know you could break a rib break your back uh, a lot of things like that can go wrong uh so it, like it was some weeks later that i began to realize that hey this is legit and he's actually leaving and my thought was oh now we're gonna lose that great great you know, mid show for it, for the audience, you know, that I thought was a really integral point. Uh, I always saw Stevie as a much more impactful player than the business had ever allowed him to be in. Uh, he understood it. Like he, he, it, and as crazy when they started the, the, the new world order, the blue world order, then, you know, the, 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 the kiss takeoff and all those things, they were always so timely and so relevant as you know, that everybody in the building would get it instantly. And to see him leave, you know, it, you got the sense that we had a real solid young talent that could easily have stepped into that next up role and filled it easily, and then all, even up from there. And so, like that's where, like I think for me, that started becoming the the uh, sort of the template of these guys come in and they're going to be great for us. But the first injury that comes, they're going to take the powder and get away from it for, you know, for, to, to lengthen their careers. And I think in, in some ways that's, again, some of the stuff, it wasn't any one thing that brought ECW down. Uh, it, I think it was a like a whole bunch of just cascading events like that, that sort of got beyond our control. Uh, things like the nine one, one incident, uh, uh, Stevie's broken neck, uh, the, the fans and the, you know, the potential lawsuits that were coming on some of these things. You couldn't alter the product without altering what it meant to the fans. And so we were sort of painted into that for that seven years, but boy, what that seven years produced was, I think, pretty prodigious. Uh, just picking up on one brief thing I mentioned before, uh, I, I can't remember who said that Stevie was possibly in line for the ECW world title, but do you think at this time, 97, he was popular enough that it would have been a good decision for the company? With the right trajectory, absolutely. Um he couldn't have stepped right out. Of, well, and, 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 you know, so far be it from a second guess any of Paul's booking, but uh, the fans knew that Stevie could get in there and put on a good solid match. And he hadn't yet been mi mixed in with the top guys yet. He was still just like sort of playing around along the periphery. I don't think if you wanted to legitimize as a champion that he could have stepped right out of the blue world order and into the uh you know top spot but i think you could have you know you could have segmented his uh his segue from that to that next thing mm -hmm. and it wouldn't and, and i think that's probably what was part of that three-way dance because when you first sent me the link i'd forgotten about that match and uh, my thought in watching it was this is a weird makeup like you know stevie and funk and sandman it just seemed left field right field center field uh, but they made it work. And I, again, I think it's a testament to Stevie's working uh, and all three of them playing off of each other properly. Uh, there was a great chemistry there in that. As crazy as that sounds, because it was such a herky-jerky sort of spot, st spot stylized match meant to showcase, say, Sandman and Funk and then Funk and uh, Stevie, then Stevie and Sandman. <laughs> those are hard matches to pull off, and I thought they did a really good job, especially considering one of those guys was basically at that point really an enhancement role mm. and you know showed they could be a lot more than that.